Hello citizens of internet, today, I'm going to discuss face presentation. Face presentation refers to a fetal malpresentation in which the fetal face from forehead to chin is the leading fetal body part descending into the birth canal. The fetal neck is highly extended, sharply deflexed, such that the occiput may touch the back. The presentation is cephalic. Attitude is complete extension of head. The presenting part is face, which is the portion between root of nose, nasion, and mentum and laterally the malar prominences, see figure. The diameter of engagement is submentobregmatic, which is 9.5 cm, or sometimes trachylobregmatic, which is 10.2 cm. Please note that the value of diameter of engagement in face as well as vertex anterior presentations is the same. There are two types of face presentation. Primary face presentation which are cases that are present before the onset of labor. They are rare. Secondary face presentation are cases that occur and are diagnosed after onset of labor. An initial brow presentation can undergo full extension and become as secondary face presentation. 35% are diagnosed in first stage. 27% are diagnosed in second stage, 35% are diagnosed at the time of delivery. Incidence of face malpresentation is 1 in 550 on average or 1 in 600 to 800 births. Face presentation can occur due to various causes such as maternal causes like cephalopelvic disproportion, grand multiparity, or polyhydramnios. Fetal causes are nuchal cord, prematurity, anencephaly, and congenital goiter, thyroglossal, or branchial cyst. However, in a large proportion of cases the cause is unknown. Mechanism of labor in face presentation is as follows. The widest diameter of the fetal head negotiating the pelvis is the trachylobregmatic, which is 10.2 cm, 0.7 cm larger than the suboccipitobregmatic diameter. Because of this increased diameter, engagement does not occur until the face is at plus 2 station. Please note, molding cannot occur in face presentation. Vaginal delivery is possible in many cases. Fortunately, the mentum is anterior in over 60% of cases of face presentation, transverse in 10 to 12% of cases, and posterior only 20 to 25% of the time. Fetuses with the mentum transverse position usually rotate to the mentum anterior position, and 25 to 33% of fetuses with mentum posterior position rotate to a mentum anterior position. When the mentum is posterior, the neck, head and shoulders must enter the pelvis simultaneously, resulting in a diameter too large for the maternal pelvis to accommodate unless in the very preterm or small infant. Mechanism of labor in mento anterior or transverse position is ad follows. In the presence of adequate pelvis and good uterine contractions the following cardinal movements take place. First there is descent. Next there is internal rotation of mentum towards symphysis pubis. Following internal rotation, the mentum is below the maternal symphysis. As the face descends onto the perineum, the anterior fetal chin passes under the symphysis and flexion of the head occurs, making delivery possible with maternal expulsive forces. This is followed by restitution, external rotation and lastly body is borne by lateral flexion. Mechanism of labor in mento posterior position is as follows. In 70% cases, the mentum undergoes long internal rotation of 135 degrees to reach the pubic symphysis and head is borne by flexion, vaginal delivery is possible. In remaining 30% cases, mentum does not rotate anteriorly and there is persistent mentoposterior presentation. There is no mechanism of labor for persistent mentoposterior and hence spontaneous or instrumental vaginal delivery is impossible unless mentum is rotated anteriorly. If the mentum is posterior or transverse, the fetal neck is too short to span the length of the maternal sacrum and is already at the point of maximal extension. 
The head cannot deliver as it cannot extend any further through the symphysis and caesarean delivery is the safest route of delivery. Persistent mentum posterior can only deliver by extension, but the head is already extended maximally and thus delivery is not possible. Coming to clinical diagnosis, findings on Leopold grips are fundal grip, breech is felt, right lateral and left lateral grip, back and limbs felt on either side. On pelvic grip, head is floating till late in labor, head appears to be engaging but is actually not engaged. On deep pelvic grip, cephalic prominence is on the same side as the back, there is a palpable sulcus between the prominence and the back. Fetal heart sounds are best heard over the fetal chest. On internal examination early in labor, presenting part is high up, watch glass type of bag of membranes may be felt because presenting part does not fit the cervix well. The intrapartum diagnosis of face presentation is possible by vaginal examination in the late first or the second stage of labor. Palpation of the orbital ridge and orbits, saddle of the nose, mouth, and chin is diagnostic of face presentation. The fontanelles and sutures are not generally palpable. At diagnosis, nearly 60% of face presentations are mentum anterior, 26% are mentum posterior, and 15% are mentum transverse, and may be designated as left or right. During internal examination, it is important to know how to differentiate between face and breech. Face presentation may be misdiagnosed as a frank breech presentation on digital examination since the latter is more commonly encountered, and therefore expected. Both presentations are characterized by soft tissues with an orifice, however, careful palpation will identify the bony facial structures and lead to the correct diagnosis. In face presentation, the bony protuberances are mentum and malar prominences forming a triangle and the opening in the center is the mouth. With ultrasound readily available in most delivery units, confirmation of the type of malpresentation, breach or face, is easily obtained if needed. In the pre-ultrasound era, clinical diagnosis was confirmed by plain X-ray of abdomen and pelvis. In the plain X-ray on left, diagnosis is face presentation because mentum is at a lower level than anterior fontanelle and the flat plane of face is more or less perpendicular to the long axis of vagina. Intrapartum, transabdominal, translabial, or transvaginal sonography of a face presentation will show a hyperextended fetal neck, with the orbits and nasal bridge at the center of the presenting part in the mid-sagittal plane. Although imaging studies can be performed to confirm the diagnosis if it is uncertain, imaging is not mandatory, and results do not have prognostic value for predicting the outcome of labor. Sonologists must also rule out placenta previa, fetal anomalies like anencephaly, branchial cyst or loops of cord round the neck. Management in first stage of labor is as follows. The fetal heart rate is monitored continuously, ideally with an external device. An internal device may cause facial or ophthalmic injuries if improperly placed. If internal monitoring is required, the electrode should be carefully applied over a bony structure such as the forehead, mandible, or zygomatic bones to minimize the risk of trauma. Abnormalities of the fetal heart rate occur more frequently with face presentations. In one series, severe variable and late decelerations developed in 29 and 24 percent of labors, respectively. Only 14 percent of pregnancies had normal tracings. Moreover, 13 percent of the newborns had a low 5-minute APGAR score. Oxytocin can be used to augment labor. Second stage management of mento anterior position is as follows. Over 75% of mentum anterior fetuses deliver spontaneously vaginally. Episiotomy is necessary because of over-distension of the vulva, see figure. Forceps delivery may be indicated in the remaining 25% cases with prolonged second stage. Any typical forceps, including keel and forceps, can be used. Management of the mentum transverse position is the same as for mentum posterior position. 
Trial of labor can be given in mento-posterior cases, provided there are no other adverse factors. Partogram must be maintained to watch for progress of labor. If there is failure of progress, mento-posterior can be delivered vaginally by applying Keelan's or Lefts or other long rotation forceps, but vacuum cup cannot be applied over face. In the past, Manual conversion of the mentum posterior face to an occiput anterior or mentum anterior position was attempted using internal and external manipulation. In thorn maneuver, with the vaginal hand, the operator flexes the head and with the other hand per abdomen he pushes the breech. An assistant meanwhile presses against the baby's trunk or abdomen to jackknife the baby into position. See figure. Given the safety and ready availability of cesarean birth, internal version should be reserved for occasions when cesarean birth is unable to be accomplished due to lack of surgical facilities and inability to arrange maternal transport, or absolute maternal refusal, to allow a cesarean birth. Management of persistent mentoposterior position is as follows. Cesarean section is treatment of choice, especially in cases of mentosacral arrest with living baby. Mentoposterior cases given a trial of vaginal delivery can be rotated to mentoanterior position and delivered vaginally by applying Keelan's or Lefts or other long forceps. Vacuum cup cannot be applied on face. Patients with abnormal labor progression are delivered by cesarean. If the fetus is estimated to be larger than their prior newborns, or in nulliparous patients, most modern-day obstetricians, would recommend cesarean birth early in the labor course. There is consensus that assisted vaginal delivery is contraindicated for mentum posterior presentations. Neonates, who were in face presentation, often have significant facial edema, also known as tumefaction, facial bruising and ecchymosis, and skull molding. This usually resolves within the first 24 to 48 hours of life. Personnel and equipment for performing endotracheal intubation should be readily available at delivery. Difficulty in ventilation during resuscitation has been reported and attributed to tracheal and laryngeal trauma and edema. Facial trauma and spinal cord injury have also been described in case reports and are often associated with version, extraction, and mid-forceps rotations. Appropriate management of face presentation, as described above, typically does not result in increased serious maternal or neonatal morbidity. If one observes the neonate after delivery, one can easily make out that this baby must have delivered as face presentation from the persistent extended attitude of head. See figure. Neonatologists with expertise in neonatal resuscitation should be present at delivery in the event that intubation is required. Edema of the face, tumefaction, and bruising may cause feeding difficulties. It disappears within a few days after birth. What about neonatal outcome? Prior to 1955, increased rates of intrapartum fetal death and perinatal mortality, approximately 10%, were reported for face presentation. Perinatal mortality decreased to 2-3% to by 1980, likely due to the increased use of cesarean birth, as well as other advances in obstetric and neonatal care. If you want to know about this topic or any other topic in obstetrics or gynecology, please refer to my books, Modern Gynecology, Modern Obstetrics, and Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology. They are available on Amazon.in. Their links are given below. For purchase inquiries, contact me on the WhatsApp number mentioned here. I have also written and published two question and answer books, which are very useful for students appearing for undergraduate and postgraduate examinations. These are Clinical Cases in Obstetrics, 1000 Plus Questions and Answers, and Clinical Cases in Gynecology, 1000 plus questions and answers. These are also available on Amazon.in. You can also follow me on other social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and Blogspot. Their links are given in the description box below. 
If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, and also subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon for more educational videos like this. Thank you for watching.